Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Uh, today we're working on day 29 of Craftly Hall. We have one day left after this one. Oh my goodness. I know a few of you are going to be sad to see it go, and so am I. Uh, I am working on the smaller version of a tag uh, journal at the moment, trying to figure out if I can get it to work for something to sell at the shop. So... I'll be still dabbling in it here and there. <laughs> so this is the Sneaky Peek Journal, and we have a really big doily. I think this is one of those 12-inch doilies. And I folded it up, and I put some purple behind here. Um, I decorated this up with some ripped-off pieces and a bingo card. I had a little... I think I did this for a challenge. I'm trying to remember what happened because... That's why I have this little dangle over here, and I have the public schools here. There was something to do with the challenge, I remember. I can't remember what. I didn't keep track. I did do a little bit of stamping on the back with the script stamp. And this, I think, who, who did I see? I think I saw Gail Augustinelli have something to do with this. Something along the lines of this. Uh, da, 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 da. She did not have it as a pocket like I do, but she had something that went down through here. But that may be just where she folded it over, but it was a tag that went in this way. But I wanted to make it go either direction. I wanted you to be able to, to access a pocket this way. And is that right? Yeah, I think it's going all the way across. Um, no, it's hitting on something. There we go. Um, so if you want to see me try to do this, I will do it. Let me know at the end, like, <laughs> you know, the, the process. And, um, yeah, I think I even have these bags. I got those at Walmart way back when. Uh, now I don't know what I have left in this book. I don't think there is anything. Yeah, this was some paper somebody gave me. And I put, uh, this image from, uh, Kyung, the... Wonders by Wink on Etsy. That was one of her images from her Paris uh, journal, uh, digital. And then that's the last page. So that is it. We're done. I guess this one gets to go back to mom. And I'm going to have to find me something else <laughs> to go through. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So, Craftly Hall, we have a full page we're going to work on today. And this is what came on the day, uh, the pages day, day 29. We have a double tag here. We have a church tag. And they we have this, they were in communication with a gentleman who had himself been a reverend at the church, which stood on the site in the 1700s. That was the sentence I was getting ready to read on the last one of these. And I had to stop. I said, oops, I got to stop right here. All right, so Tracy did a day 30 freebie. Now, most of it's going to go on the next day. But this one, uh, I chose the tag that, that was with it. Um, and it had two images of a church uh, cemetery with different flowers being seen. So I got that. I have an image of a bat. Um, I have this that looks like it could be like a little plaque in the church or something and then i had this notebook that i thought could have been you know ernest brundles or something and it's it's showing the location of a church and an old cemetery and uh then i'm i'm not sure if that's a church or the courthouse or something i think there's an image like that early on in the, my pages and I think it was where the doctor's wife was doing research and finding out what was going on on the property way back when. So, day 29. I'm going to start at the beginning of this paragraph so I can read it in its entirety. <laughs> so, over the course of the following 45 minutes, both Ernest and the Reverend posed questions while Rose, Jeffrey, and the co two committee members... Uh, listened intently. It transpired as the knocking and questioning went on that they were in communication with a gentleman who had himself been a reverend at the church 
which stood on the site in the 1700s, and that he appeared to be a distant relative of the current Reverend Dixon, who was with them now. It was uh, he, indeed, who had been seen around the house throughout the preceding weeks, although his responses indicated that he had meant no harm, but had only wanted the binders to be aware of his presence and to understand that he wanted to communicate with them. He revealed that the source of the sounds, the writing on the walls, and the mirrors, as well as the curious movement and placing of various objects around the house and the throwing of stones, it had all been the work of others, of those poor souls who had fallen into the terrible grip of the plague that struck in the area in 1665. They were dreadfully unsettled, the reverend indicated, not only due to the way they suffered, but also because they had now been forgotten, lost in time, and felt they should be in some way honored, since it had been they who first cleared the land on which later residents had made their homes. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I was I was mumbling ahead there to see what I needed to do. All right, so this is going to be a full sheet. I'm not I got all my little tags up here of what I've put on the page so I can keep track of that. And I don't know, maybe next year, come January, I'll feel the need to maybe make some journals for the following year, you know. Oh, I just I don't know if I got it in me this year. That's why I'm making those tag books. Okay, so this gets folded in half, like we always do. And it will have the church on it, like that. So we need to figure out where... See, everything is on regular paper, so it's no pockets or anything. I'm wondering, though... All right, I went ahead and cut this out as well so I could make myself a pocket. This is also from the Day 30 freebie, and uh, I think it really looks like the inside of that little chapel right there. So I thought I could make that the pocket that that would tuck into. <clears throat> so then the rest of this, I'm thinking, I really like this. That almost looks like the inside stucco wall of the church and that would go good with this i don't know that i need it to be a tag shape so <clears throat> we'll just go ahead and cut that off just trim it right across there where it's flat and we'll go ahead and give that a little bit of ink now as you recall the church used to stand here on the property and then it burnt down um, and there was something mysterious that happened because that one the, the one convict that had one finger missing on his right hand or something his his forefinger was missing uh, he was thought to have been why <clears throat> the the church had burned in the 1700s and that he could be uh, the source of why the reverend disappeared and thought to have been, you know, murdered or something. They didn't know for sure. They never found him. They never found his body or anything. So <clears throat> we have that to look at. And then I thought this background looked like it could have been something like a, one of those beautiful... Uh, walls in a church or something with all the relief on it. Um, what do you call those? You see it in a lot of art books and fancy establishments and things. I'm sure this is just wallpaper, but to me it looks like it could be more to it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue my tag together like I always do. I think this is the first time I've actually put a pocket pocket in here <laughs> like that because usually I have cut a hole into my piece and here I'm going to get this over here and 
rub it down so I got it down nice and smooth. But yeah, I usually will cut a like a little slit in there and have it go in that way. All right, I got that down, but I need to trim it. I hope everyone is doing well today, and I'm so happy you stopped by to spend a little time with me and to uh, catch the last few days <laughs> of Craftly Hall. I do have a little something that I'll probably do. Uh, I have to do a cover, and, you know, I probably won't do that on film, but I will do something with that uh, briefcase kind of a situation I'm going to come up with for Ernest Brundle's uh, satchel and all that, where he's going to have all of his information. Remember, we have all that about the twins to deal with. Uh, you know, we have we have a little bit of information I made up on the twins, but Tracy never said anything about that. I know a lot of the other ones that were doing tag books and <clears throat> just tags in general, and posted it over there to her page. I know they were getting into the twins too. And this one girl was saying something about it, you know, it being one of the only places in the county that had such a multiple set of twins being born in a, a certain amount of time or something along those. <laughs> she was, she had some kind of a neat kind of storyline that went with that. And, uh, <clears throat> I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, this one lady, Alma. Mm, gosh, she was... I gotta go back and look at some of her stuff, because she made some of the most amazing-looking things. She had such interactive pieces, and... Ugh, I just... <clears throat> see if I can get a little bit of her oomph. <laughs> now, this can go into here like that. I love that old-timey looking church. Now, that was probably, I'm thinking this may have been the church that was there in the past, maybe, when the Reverend was there. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I want to put this. That could go over there because it's, it's the whole day. So, let's see what else we have here. We had, <clears throat> we have the flowers, which is good because that has to do with the churchyard, that might be kind of neat up there. I have this bat, which you always see bats in the belfry or, you know, the tower. Uh, and then, I don't know, I've got this little book, the little map. And I thought that would be kind of neat here. I'm still trying to debate what I might want to do with it, though. It, like I wanted to make maybe... This a this is like a piece of paper. I didn't put it on anything in particular, but I could. I could put it on something and trim it back out. Let me think about it. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to put this on a piece of... Um, it's almost like... It's, not, it's sort of cardstock. I guess you could call it cardstock. Uh, I think Paper Crafting with Miss Tommy... She gave me a bunch of these. They're like little uh, journal card blanks, I guess you could call them. So I'm going to put that down to become my tuck. It's going to become a tuck. And I need another one. <laughs> I'll use these things up yet. They're just like a little manila piece of paper. And I'm going to put this on it. I want this to be holding up. And strong enough. So let's glue this baby down. I'm still debating where to put my bat. I think I'm going to put him down here on the bottom. It's kind of like all the church stuff is down here on this bottom row. All right, so that looks good. Let me wipe that down and we'll kind of cut that back out again. And let's go ahead and do it this way. Are all of y'all having a very nice summer? I, I'm not going nowhere yet. I won't go anywhere until October. My husband, though, he's been at Walmart 
for years and years. He's like the oldest one there now. Um, gosh, is it 32 something years that he's been there? Anyway, they're going to send him to Arkansas where the home offices are. I don't know if there's something special happening. I think I think they must be, you know, sending all of their long-time employees there. So he gets to go. He's very nervous. He doesn't like to fly. <laughs> Blame me. Our only time flying was when we went to Alaska in 2004. And that trip back home, going over Ohio from Chicago, and then we're going back to Dulles Airport in Washington, was quite bumpy. <laughs> I think they were having tornado touchdowns and all kinds of things like that at that time. Did I glue that end down? I guess I didn't. So it was very, very interesting. I know this one time we went and hit this one bump. And, oh, I thought I lost my stomach on that one. I'm not as bad. I'm I'm okay. I liked, I used to like roller coasters, so I guess that kind of thing I can handle. But my husband was quite green. And even when we got on the ship that one time when we was on open ocean, oh my gosh, <laughs> I know we were walking backward. We were walking toward the back of the boat to go to, to our meal that night. And I put my foot up to take the next step. And uh, I don't know if we hit a big wave out there <laughs> or what it was. But when I went to go put my foot back down, the, the floor wasn't there. <laughs> It was like the floor was not there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I almost stumbled. It was that bad. I think that was the night we had captain's night because you can't go anywhere. You don't have any places to go or to see when you're out. You're, you're traveling to the inner passage or whatever. So that was the night they always had captain's night. So we got to all go to the auditorium. And let me tell you, I love that auditorium because it was decorated up like Egyptian. It was, everything was Egyptian. It had, it had all those, uh, whatever, the, the motifs and stuff as you walked in. There was a place that had all these sarcophagi in a row. Oh my God. Oh, I could have lived there. <laughs> I loved it. All right, we're going to glue this little guy down. It was right up my alley. And then you got inside. You saw hieroglyphics above the stage. But what it was is the captain. Captain's night is where you get. You got to have two drinks for free. You got to try different cocktails and drinks. I'm trying to remember the two that I had. One of them I was not crazy about. The other one I really liked. I don't know if that was a cosmopolitan. Or what that was. I'm doing put a little blush of vintage photo oxide over the back of this it's too white for me <laughs> and yeah i had something it's sort of yellowy um but i really like the taste of it usually i only like fruit drinks that's why my bbc was such a hit with me so <clears throat> we got to sit in there he would bring up all the crew members introduce them that kind of thing so this little book is going back there I'm thinking I want to have my little bat. Do I want my little bat there? Or up here? Maybe we'll put all the flowers over there. Because the bat has to do with the church. So we're going to put him back up over here. So yeah, it was... It was <laughs> I loved the trip. I loved it. We wanted to go back so bad. Never did. We were waiting for this one girl's daughter to get big enough to want to go. And then she got big enough. She didn't want to go. <laughs> so it was too late. You got to go when the getting's good. Because, mm, you know, you're only young once. And there was a lot of hiking. A lot of this. I think I'm going to go with this the way I had it. Uh, yeah, we had... 
beautiful weather most of the time we were there. Others that went, we had a group in the pharmacy that went like a week or two after us. There was quite a few of them that went. They had horrible weather because we were on that one train ride and they didn't get to see nothing. <clears throat> it was all fog. I was thinking there was something I wanted to discuss. Hmm. Oh, the Holter Files. That's what it was. Okay. Well, I don't know why, because these aren't new shows. These were done in 2019. But there's something on TV, probably the Sci-Fi Channel, uh, called the Holter Files. And I really love it. There's a there's a psychic lady on there called Cindy Cotts. I got a gnat that just won't leave me alone. And um, she is so good. She she does psychic writing and um, psych psychometry where she touches things. And sometimes she can tell who had it before and all kinds of goodies like that. But she's on there. She's part of the team. And then there's a videographer kind of guy. He's on the team. And then um, there's two that always sit around the table at the very beginning, introducing the um, the whole shebang that they're going to research that night or that day. And uh, one of them is the daughter of the Holcher guy that was the first ghost hunter. He, that's what they claim. He was the first ghost hunter. All right, I'm going to be gluing this in while I'm chatting. Um, yeah, but supposedly he was the first ghost hunter. Uh, he, I mean, it wasn't that far back. It was like the early 20s and 30s or something, I guess. Uh, he was a German guy, thus the, the name. And uh, he would uh, go around and he made all these files on what he was researching and what he found out, if he resolved anything, that kind of stuff. But his daughter, uh, she remembered some of the cases that he did because she went to a few of them or went to the house with him when he did the preliminary interviews and such. But yeah, it's, it was really interesting to hear how all that kind of come about. And he he did all kinds of places... In Europe and America, all over. So, yeah. That sent me some of the 2019 shows back onto my my recording device on my TV. So, <clears throat> I got some of those to watch. Yay, yay, yay. I got to watch the Olympics tonight, though, because Mom said she came over earlier. And she said that's when the... Um, what do you call it? The uh, the uh, gymnastics was going to be on tonight. Okay, now I got to glue this one down to here. I guess <laughs> it's a good thing that I have numbers on each one of these pages. I'm not going to know what they go back in order for, by. So yeah, I got to watch my gymnastics tonight. I told her I said, you know, the opening ceremonies. Ugh, I'm sorry, I. If y'all enjoyed those, <laughs> good for you. I did not. I did not enjoy those. I was trying to figure out. Now, we were watching it at the very beginning. And my husband, he, um, he I got to write a number down here. So, he, uh, he turned it on. He, he likes to flip, though, you know, uh, surf. <laughs> But it was like they were in these boats in a canal. And I guess that was like the usual thing where they walk in with the flag, you know. Well, there's Spain. And it starts with an S, you know. And I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden it starts to go to E's. And I'm like, well, what happened? Are they in alphabetical order? How is this working? And he says, I don't know. That confused me too because... You know, everything else is going E, F, G, H, I. <laughs> I said, well, I, yeah, that's totally out there. I don't have any idea how that's supposed to be working. And I thought about it. I was talking to Mom about that, too. And 
when she came over earlier. And I think, I think it's because in their language, it starts with an E. It's Espanol or something. It's Espana. And so maybe that's it. And, you know, they just called it Spain for America. All right. I have to get my numbers. Where are they at? I did a little rearranging on my desk up here. I bought one of these little guys, like a little shower caddy, to put my my uh, little tools in and my glue and stuff in one and my punches. So I got all that there. Let's see. Do I have a two? Whoa. Well, I'm going to have to hold off on that because I don't have a two or a nine. All right. We'll do that another day. <laughs> So, let me get my pages back together so you can actually see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, 21 is there. There's 22. How does this go? Yeah, that's the right side. So, I guess it goes like that. And then, I got 23, 24. So it goes like that. And then... Yeah, goes like that. Okay. And I don't <clears throat> have this to go in yet until I do the, the sew in. I sew the signature in. Yeah, this was my little guy I did yesterday or the last video. And then we had this one today. All right. So I got to get my, my die cut machine out and fix that. All right. Well, I hope you <clears throat> enjoyed what you saw today and especially the story that went along with this. Um, and then you've heard that's who has been haunting Crafley Hall. It was the plague victims mostly. And so, yeah, we finally have found out. Now, the next one, you will find out how they resolve the issue of appeasing the spirits. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great, great day. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.